Okay, good morning, everyone. And I'm so sorry for the delay. We were uh, actually, we entered into uh, Minister's Foundation for the last semester co course. I mean, that happened last fall. We were wondering why things were not working. And then we suddenly realized that we've entered into uh, the fall, the last year's fall semester uh, Minister's Foundation. And so everything was just not working. And anyway, we finally figured it out. So we're so sorry for the delay. We'll begin class and um, just give me a minute. Okay. Okay. So welcome uh, all our in-person students and our uh, online students as well. I think there's Surya uh, and Prabhu, Bhikkhu, uh, Krisha, Gautami. So welcome and. Um, Welcome to our in-person uh, students as well. OK, uh, and we're going to look, be looking at uh, BC 101, Minister's uh, Foundation. OK, in this um, Minister's Foundation, we are going to be looking at three APC publication, three APC publication books. The first one is uh, Fulfilling God's Purpose for Your Life. Uh, the second one, we look at God's uh, Guidance. And um, the third one we'll be looking at is um, uh, is Code of Honor. Okay, uh, we actually stopped um, uh, publishing our um, uh, our publications, APC publications, but we will be soon resuming that. So all of you in-person students will receive a copy uh, of it. But then um, you can uh, you can are you uh, do you have access to the uh, Google Classroom? No? OK, then you can go to www.apcwo.org um, on your mobiles. And um, you can look at uh, the publications there. And then you can open to fulfilling God's purpose for your life. Anyone needs help with that to open it online? Uh, for those of you who are attending in the online classes, uh, in the Google Classroom on the stream page, I've already, uh, uh, in the course material, I have uh, given you a PDF uh, copy. I've already sent you a PDF copy last week uh, of this book, Fulfilling God's Purpose for Your Life. So uh, it'll be nice if all of you could open your PDF copy, and it would be nice if you could uh, follow it. OK? Everyone's uh, been able to access? Okay. Do you need a phone? Okay. One minute. I will share. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So before we begin, um, can we just pause for a word of prayer? Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you, God, for um, another new day. We thank you for the good rains that uh, we've been able to enjoy these last few uh, weeks and months. We thank you for your goodness and your faithfulness, oh God, in our lives. We thank you that we can awaken, uh, refreshed and strengthened to face another new day. We thank you because uh, you are a God who opposes us with your righteous right hand. You're a God who leads us, who, a God who goes with us. Your presence is with us, God. And we do not have to fear anything. Uh, we thank you for the opportunity that we have to learn from your word. We thank you for all our um, online students and our in-person um, students. We thank you for each one of them. We bless each one of them in your name. God, even as they have pursued their calling in their life and um, they are uh, here to equip themselves, God, for ministry, we pray that you would, uh, Spirit of God, that you would um, uh, minister to them, you would quicken their hearts, you would stir their hearts up, your word uh, will come up, uh, will fall upon their hearts and their minds in a very fresh way. They will receive fresh new revelations of your word. Uh, they will be um, equipped uh, uh, so that they can go out and preach and teach and minister your word effectively, God. We thank you that um, you're a God who has a purpose and a plan for each one of us. And your purposes and your plan for us are good and pleasing and perfect. And we thank you for that, God. We thank you that uh, you reveal your plan and your purpose for us. And even as we align ourselves, our wills, our heart, uh, to you, God, we thank you that you're a God who reveals your will to us, your plan. You guide us, you lead us, God. And we pray that this course will um, 
transform our hearts and our minds, our understanding of how uh, we need to be ministers of the word, um, how we need to live our lives so that we can minister effectively and be your representative here on earth. We thank you for hearing our prayer. We commit the rest of this time and this day into your hands. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, uh, online students, if you are not able to follow me or you have any questions, uh, please feel free to, you know, uh, type in um, in the in the chat section, and I will answer your questions, your queries. If I'm too fast, if I'm too slow, uh, you can also, you know, put that in the chat section. And if you did not understand anything, please, um, you know, you can always ask me, and I will. Um, you know, um, explain that again. And for our in-person classes, uh, students, please raise up your hand if you have any queries, any questions. If I'm too fast uh, and you're not following, you can, you know, raise your hand up and uh, I can help. Okay. So let's look at uh, fulfilling God's purpose for our life. Um, now, from this heading, fulfilling God's purpose for your life, um, what uh, comes to your mind? Or what do you understand? What are your thoughts about what we'll be looking at in this book? Any thoughts? You can um, type it in the chat section. For those of you here, you can answer. What is your expectation from this course, Minister's Foundation? What comes to your mind when you look at this course, uh, Minister's Foundation? Sorry? Finding out God's word for your life, will for your life, okay? Okay. What comes to your mind when you think of Minister's Foundation? There's Asha and... Uh... Oh, yeah. <laughs> God. <laughs> okay. Yes. What comes to your mind when you, when, you, when you saw the subject or when you now think of the subject Minister's Foundation? Laying uh, basic biblical foundations and be strong in that. So who's laying the biblical foundations? Okay, we're learning from this book. So who's going to be uh, laying the foundation? The Holy Spirit. Okay, and for whom? For us. Okay, for each one of us. Thank you. Okay, anyone else? What is your expectation from this course? It's always good to have some expectation. Uh, you know, otherwise, um, just coming and sitting and maybe will kind of get very boring for you. Knowing more about God's truth, you said? Yes, okay. Okay, one of our um, online students says, learning how to be a good servant of God and recognizing and fulfilling God's calling on our life. Thank you, Krisha. Surya says we can monitor everything in ministry and we can lead ministry in a great way. Yes, thank you. Actually, what is the basics for the minister's foundation? We all struggle with that. Finding God's will, right? You've come to Bible college now. You've enrolled into uh, this course. or uh, You're doing your Bible college course and you're wondering what next, right? Uh, which um, uh, field or area God wants me to minister. And sometimes we can go through this whole three years, but we can come to the end of the three years and still wonder where is, where is God leading me? What is he wanting me to do? That's a big question mark, right? Um, but we just hope and pray that, you know, uh, as we go through this course, uh, rather than just looking at these publications, which is a course that you just have to go through, maybe you can spend time asking God, God, reveal what is the next season or uh, what is the next step um, uh, in my life? Where, where are you leading me? What do you want me to do? Do you want me to do first year only, second year, third year? What is your plan and purpose? And God does reveal his plan and purpose for our life. Uh, Prabhu says, knowing God's will. Thank you. Okay, so... Um, Let's look at this first um, book, uh, Fulfilling God's Purpose for Our Life. Okay. Um, now, God is a God of plan, purpose, and he's a God of design. He's a God of objectives. Okay. God does not do anything randomly or arbitrarily. That means uh, he does not just think one day, okay, let me just do this. 
okay or uh, let me uh, bring about this okay it's not that god is a god of plan he's a god of order he's a, a god who has planned everything even before the foundations of the world okay he's a god of purpose he's a god of design and he's a god of objectives okay god's plan is so profound that even before the foundations of the world uh, you know he already had in mind or uh, you know uh, the word of god says that the lamb of god was slain even before the foundations of the world which means that when god created everything perfect and when adam and eve sinned he did not say oh oh now what do we do what is plan b right but uh, the plan of redemption was already a, a plan a done completed accomplished thing in the heart and the mind of uh, god that means even before god created the world even before adam and eve sinned the plan of redemption was already completed done thing in the mind of god because the lamb of god was already slain even before the foundations of the world and uh, so we know that our god is a god of order a god uh, of purpose design a uh, plan he doesn't do anything arbitrarily okay how do we know this from god's word or if you look around in creation how do we know that god is a god of plan design god of purpose how do we know yes looking at the universe looking at the world looking at creation right there is order uh, after the you know we have uh, summer we have spring we have uh, summer and then we have uh, the monsoons and then we have um, uh, winter and then back again so god does not say okay now you know uh, too much of rains let me just bring about some uh, uh, you know some uh, let me bring about winter no there is a, a a particular sequence a particular order we know that the the sun comes out in the morning and it sets and then we have the moon and the stars so there is order and design in uh, in creation as well so if you look at um, um, uh, psalms chapter 33 verse 11 can somebody read that yes 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 he did yes he already knew that he is going they are going to do it um, God already knows who is, uh, you know, if you look at the, the book of Romans, uh, uh, if you read the book of Romans, uh, we see there that, you know, um, uh, we kind of think that uh, this whole theory of predestination, God already knows or God chooses who will choose him. It's not that. It's not God is not a partial God. Okay, he already knew before even you were formed in your mother's womb, even before you came into this world, he already knew what are the choices you're going to make. See, and so he already knew that Adam and Eve are going to sin. And so he already had in mind the plan of redemption, how he's going to bring it about. And he already saw his son dying on the cross and, uh, you know, uh, uh, fulfilling the whole plan of redemption it was already completed done thing in the mind of god and that is why he's god so you're saying uh, you're asking why did then god create adam and eve when he already knew that his plan is going to go haywire um well he already had a plan of redemption he already knew how he's going to save mankind um but he is a god who uh, has given us the free will to choose and that's why i said yesterday in our afternoon session that when god created us he created us in his uh, in his image which means when he created us in his image he's not a partial god to withhold some things and give us some things okay um he gave us when he created us in his image and his likeness which means Means he created us just like him which means that God is without sin he created us without sin God is holy he created us holy God never dies he created us never to die uh, God has a mind he gave us a mind okay and God has a will and he gave us a will free will to choose and that is why he does not treat you and me like puppets you know he already knows some of the uh, the wrong choices I'm going to make but he does not treat me like a puppet he lets me choose but he guides me what to choose. But the choice is mine. If I choose the wrong thing, I suffer and I can't blame God for that. Okay? 
Okay, so let's look at Psalm 33, verse 11. Can somebody read that, please? Yeah, so here we see that, you know, God's uh, plan uh, is, is something that stands through all generations. Okay, what he has planned even before the foundations of the world uh, is something that he brings about um, a, a, in time, in history, uh, in the fullness of time, in time and history, and he works out his plan. Um, and we see this in creation. Um, Acts chapter 15, verse 18. Can somebody read that? Acts. Yeah, so from eternity means eternity past, eternity future. God knows everything that he is going to be uh, doing. He knows ahead of time what he is going to be uh, doing. Isaiah 46.10, can somebody read that please? Yes, so here we see that God knows the end from the beginning. He knows your destination even before you begin your uh, journey. And he knows how, you know, you can get there. Okay. So God has a purpose for your life. And no, there is no greater purpose. Okay. There is no greater purpose than living out God's purpose for your life. There is no greater satisfaction than fulfilling God's purpose for your life. And there is no greater adventure than walking according to his purpose. I'll, I'll repeat that. This is not in your notes. Uh, I said God has a plan and a purpose for our life. There is no greater purpose than to live out God's purpose for our life. There is no greater satisfaction than fulfilling God's uh, purpose for our life. And there is no greater adventure than to walk according to his purpose. Okay. So if you want to be satisfied in life, what do you do? If you want to be satisfied in life, if you want to be happy in life, what do you do? You fulfill God's purpose for your life. Okay. Uh, if you want life to be adventurous, that means exciting, not boring, mundane, the same Thing day in and day out, if you want life to be an adventure, exciting, breathtaking, ex uh, you know, uh, things that you can explore, what do you do? You walk according to God's purpose, right? If you want to see the beauty of creation, okay, you walk, you journey, you go, you see, and you just are awed with God's creation. It's like a wonderful adventure. You just enjoy it. The same way you want to enjoy life each and every day, the best thing to do is to walk according to God's plan and his purpose for your life. Now, um, God has a, a master plan or a, a general purpose for all of us. Okay, He has a general purpose and he has a specific purpose for each one of us. So general purpose or a master plan. You know what is that? General purpose means which is inclusive of all of us, all of mankind. So God has a master plan or a general purpose, which is inclusive for, for all the whole world. And also he has a specific plan and a purpose for each one of us. So what is God's general purpose or what is his master plan? What do you think is God's plan and purpose for mankind? To be holy, okay? To love the Lord, your God, with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. To abide in Him, okay? Thank you for the answers. To live for Him forever, Krishna says. Thank you, Krishna. To know him, okay, here close. To worship him, okay, close. To partake in his nature, okay. To have a relationship with God, close. Okay, very good. To know that he died on the cross. Okay, thank you for all your answers. Uh, Surya says to be his son and daughter. Okay, uh, God's... Um, 
general purpose or his master plan is that all men be saved and come to the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Okay, so let's look at Ephesians chapter 1 verses 9 to 12. Ephesians chapter 1 verses uh, 9 to 12. Okay, can somebody read that please? Okay, thank you. Amen to that. Yes, so there are few things that we can, uh, important things that we can learn from this verse. The first one is that God's will is not a, God's will is not a mystery. Yes. What's the meaning of mystery? Something that you have to find out. Something that is, uh, a mystery can also not just be something that you find out easily, right? It's a, something that is very difficult and you'll have to follow through with clues and uh, use your brain and uh, and all of those things okay so god's will is not mysterious okay some people think that god does not reveal his will we don't know his will his will is mysterious no that's not right god's will is not mysterious uh, he reveals his will okay and his will is according to his good pleasure Okay, that means God's will is good, it is a happy will, and it's something that he has purposed in himself. He did not go and ask anyone else. Okay, he purposed in himself what is the will that he wants to establish, and that is one of the uh, the natures of the or the attributes of God. One of the natures or the attributes that makes God God is that he is sovereign. Okay, that he has a will. Of course, he's omnipotent. What is omnipotent? All powerful, omniscient, all knowing, and omnipresent. He's present everywhere. But another um, uh, characteristic that makes God God is that he is eternal and that he is sovereign. Sovereign means that he has a will and that he does what he has will, plan, and uh, purpose. So he does not ask his plan and will to anyone else. He does not go to anyone else, but it is something that he purposes in his uh, heart. And it is something that God's will is uh, something that he brings about in the fullness of time. Okay, you can look at um, verse 10. It says he brings it about in the fullness of time. Fullness of time means what? At the right time. Okay, at the right time, he brings it about. Um, and then we see that, you know, um, uh, uh, and he his plan is for everyone. Okay, both which are in heaven and which are on earth. That means his will, his plan is for uh, everyone. And we also know from verse 11 that he has a purpose. Okay, so God has a purpose. So these are some of the few things that we can, insights that we can gather from this uh, verse. And Ephesians chapter 3 verse 11, can somebody read that please? Thank you. So God's plan and purpose is eternal. What does it mean it's eternal? Everlasting and it's also it has no beginning, has no end. That means even before time began, God already has uh, had a plan and a uh, purpose. And he's unfolding his plan and purpose in history, in time. He's executing it here on earth. Okay, so what is God's master plan or his general purpose? Uh, 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 3 and 4. Can somebody read that, please? Thank you. So God's uh, master plan or his general purpose is that all men be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. 
Okay, so that is God's general uh, plan or his purpose uh, or his master plan. Now, God also has a specific plan and a specific purpose. And that specific plan and purpose is for each one of us. Okay, um, uh, look at Psalm 139 verse 16. We can gather something from Psalm 139 verse 16. So can somebody read that from the NKJV version and the Message Bible? So there are two um, versions given there in, in the publication. One is from the NKJV. The other one is from the Message Bible. So can somebody read that, please? Yeah. OK, thank you. So what do we gather from this? And can somebody read from the Message Bible? It's there in your uh, in the web, in the publication PDF. So what do we gather from this? What do we learn from this verse? OK, God uh, knew you even before you were formed in your mother's womb, even before you were born in this world, even before you even took the first breath. God knows you. OK, what does he know also about you? What has he planned about? Even before you were created in your mother's womb, OK, even before you were formed in your mother's womb, even before you came into uh, this world, you took your first breath, God had plans for you. That means even before the foundations of the world was laid, even before Adam and Eve were created, even before he separated light and darkness, he had a specific plan and purpose for each one of you. And all your days of your life were already before him. He's seen everything that you would be doing, even before you lived out those Days. Isn't that exciting? Is it that wonderful? Okay, uh, just to know that even before we were formed, God already had a plan and purpose for our life. Even before we took our first breath, uh, God has a plan and purpose for our life. So, what does it uh, tell us about God? All knowing, okay. He has an order, he has a plan, he's a God of purpose, plan, design, order, okay? What else does it tell you about this God? Yes, he loves us so much. He's so involved in our lives and we are so precious to him. We are the VIPs, you can say, of this most high God that he's even thought about us even before we are born in this world. You know, sometimes we think uh, we, when we go through life situations, when it's very, very difficult, very, very challenging, um, we think, where is God, right? Uh, we wonder if God really cares, if God really sees, if God really knows, if God really understands. Uh, but we need to know that he's already seen us going through this. He already knows we are going through this. He's already watched it. And he's not somebody who stands there and, uh, you know, he's saying, okay, suffer because you've not chosen my will or plan or purpose. But he cries along with us. His heart breaks, you know. Um, yeah. And if you look at uh, uh, the word of God, we see that, you know, uh, God's heart is grieved. His heart is sorrowful. His heart is broken uh, when he sees man. And he's, uh, if you look at in the Old Testament, he was wooing the Israelites back to himself like a mad lover running behind these adulterous, uh, stiff-necked, rebellious people. And that is God's love. So anytime you think that, you know, nobody loves you, cares for you, and what's happening in my life, everything seems to be going haywire. You need to know that God has seen everything and he loves you, he cares for you, so precious that he has plans for you, plans to prosper you plans with a hope and a future, you know, something that's good. But we need to align ourselves
to God's will and to his plan. And then we can just receive his blessing and everything that flows um, out of it. OK, so uh, even before you took your very first breath, God has a blueprint. He has a blueprint for your life. You know what's a blueprint? Copy of your original. Actually, the blueprint is what? It's kind of the original. It is the original. Like when you're building this building, you know, you have a blueprint where uh, everything is shown, where uh, the windows will be, the door will be, the exit will be, the stairs, uh, everything. Okay. Um, so it, God has a blueprint for each one of your uh, life. And he has a dream for your life. Okay. You might be having dreams for your life, but this great, wonderful God with millions of people living on this earth has a dream for your life. I mean, that really should blow your mind. That should that you should really say an amen to, right? Can you say an amen to that? Amen. OK, uh, so he created us for a purpose uh, and he designed us to be able to fulfill uh, not just our specific plan, but through the specific plan that he has for each one of us, God is actually accomplishing his master plan, okay? His greater purpose that he has, which is uh, that all men be saved and come to the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Let's read Philippians chapter 3, verse 12. Can we read Philippians 3, verse 12? Anyone? Who is writing this? Paul. And who is who is he referring to here? To the okay, he's writing to church at uh, at yeah Philippi. But uh, who is he actually referring to or talking to about here? He's talking about himself, right? He's saying, "Not that I've already attained or already perfected." Okay, so what does it tell us? What does this verse tell us? God is not finished with what he is. Okay, you are not finished with God's will for your life, okay? What do we understand from this? Not that I've already attained or already perfected. We don't have to be perfect to do God's will. God is not looking for perfect vessels, right? He knows our weaknesses. He knows our challenges. Okay, so we don't say, okay, let me become perfect and then I'll do God's will. No, we can never come to perfection because none of us can be uh, perfect. But so Paul is saying, not that I've already attained perfection or not that I've already been made perfect, but he says, I lay hold of. That means I take hold of of what Jesus Christ has called me to, what he has planned, what he has purposed, what he has willed in my life. So that is what we need to do. Okay, even as we're running our race on this earth, we need to take hold of what Christ Jesus has taken hold of us. That means we need to understand and know what uh, his will is. We need to take hold of that and we need to uh, do that. We continue running our race. Uh, let's look at Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. Let's look at what we can learn from this verse. Can somebody read that, please? Okay, thank you. So here we see that we are God's workmanship. What is the meaning of that? We are God's workmanship means what? His creation, okay? His masterpiece, okay? That's a nice way of looking at it. Are we having only the ladies in the class? Or are we having some, I can see some gentlemen here as well. Can we hear some voices of the gentlemen, please? Okay, so what do we understand from this verse? We are God's workmanship. Yes. We are his handwork. Okay. Uh, if you don't feel comfortable in speaking in, in English, you can try Hindi and English. I can understand both. I can translate that for you. Workmanship means what? God is still working on us. 
we are not completed we are not perfected okay so we are god's workmanship that means that something god is doing he's still working out in our uh, lives okay and what are we created to do to do good works and what are these uh, when did god plan these good works beforehand even before the foundations of the world so god is saying okay man this plan a is not working for um, uh your, your name is sri radha yes god's my plan is not working for sri radha so uh, let me go with some other plan let me think of an alternate plan no god does not do that you know his plans are perfect Uh, he does not change his plans he does not change his purposes uh, then you can ask you know when we read in the bible why does god change his uh, his mind he uh, why does he change his mind he really does not change his mind and he does not change his purposes but he lets people do whatever they want they will their uh, their choice okay but his plan and purpose is always according to what he has purposed and also according to what is written in his um, word okay so his plan for us is uh, the good works which god has pre planned even before the foundations of the earth so there are places god wants you to go okay there are um, lives of people that he wants you to touch there are lives that he wants you to impact there are things that he wants you to accomplish there are cities and nations that he wants you to transform and he wants you to shake the nations that is god's heart for you that is god's dream for you and that is god's plan for your life i'm going to say this again because god's plan and purpose for our life is something not small it's not something that is very little it's not something that is meager but it's something great and big okay so god's plan for us is that he wants us to go to places he wants people's lives to be touched through you okay he wants uh, your life to impact the lives of thousands he wants things he wants uh, to accomplish things through your life he wants to use you to transform cities and to shake nations can we see an amen to that amen so whenever you think about god's god's will and plan for my life you know go back to this these three um, uh, lines and this is what god has for in store for you so living life is um, is simple it's just finding out what god has planned for you and just doing it or just walking in his plan and in his a uh, purpose let's look at second timothy chapter 1 uh, verse 9 can somebody read that please so here we uh, amen yes thank you so here we see that you know god has called us according to his own purpose and it's not according to our works okay but it's according to his own plan and his purpose for our lives do we have uh, dreams for our life yes do we have a plan and a purpose for our life some of us yes some of us no okay uh, we are just maybe we're just going through the uh, the days okay but it really doesn't matter you will soon find out God, uh, your plan and purpose uh when you understand what's god's plan and purpose for your um life okay so we see that it's not something uh god's plan for our life is not that you be born again that all men know him and be saved and receive salvation and to say you know hallelujah amen i'm going to heaven i have a a, a seat book there a place book there i'm happy i just live my life here on earth it's not that no life is simple okay but it's not as simple as this okay when uh, we have a privilege of you know knowing jesus christ as our personal savior we have the privilege of receiving salvation but along with that privilege comes the responsibility okay so it's a privilege added with a responsibility and what is that responsibility 
is not just living our lives holy and pleasing, but also working out God's specific plan for our life and also through that fulfilling God's greater plan and purpose for our um, life. Okay, so we are living not for our own purposes. Okay, sometimes we have to do away with our own plan and our own purpose for our life. And it's important to pursue God's plan and purpose for your life. Has there been a time in your life when you wanted to do something and you sense God is telling you to do something else? Anyone's like like to share? Okay. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, so she wanted to be a chartered accountant, a CA. And uh, God called her to full time ministry to come to Bible college, and here she is pursuing God's call. Yes. Anyone else likes to share? Any other? Okay, yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, any of our um, uh, online students would like to share, um, you know, how you had a specific dream plan for your life and, uh, you know, God revealed something else and you struggle through, maybe you're not doing it, you're doing it, whatever. Anyone likes to share, our online students, you can unmute your mics and speak. Are you all there? OK, I don't think anyone wants to share. OK, I'll just share uh, my life. I mean, um, when I was in grade 12, our, um, uh, our Sunday school teachers taught us that, you know, uh, whenever you're in a specific stage in your life, you want to know what's next, um, ask God. Um, you know, um, what is his plan for your life? So I had this whole plan of being a cardiologist. I love being a cardiologist. And then um, I, put, I took signs in my 12th grade. But I realized that um, uh, I will not be a good cardiologist. I'll cut everyone's arteries and veins because uh, every time we had our uh, practicals, you know, when you're a science student, you have when you're practicals, they'll give you fish and cockroach and, and all of those things to dissect. I would mess up with everything. And finally, the lab attender will say, sorry, ma'am, you've used four or five specimens. I cannot give you any more. And then I realized that I'm not too good with my hands, which I'm not too. You know, I can't even draw a straight line. And so I was thinking whether I really should be a cardiologist. And I spoke to a cardiologist who comes to our church. And she was telling me all the things that a cardiologist should do. And I was like, no, this is not. Uh, where I should be, or this is not uh, this is not where I think I would fit in. And I was praying, and then God called me for full time ministry, and I was like, "No way, God! You know, I don't fit up this role. Uh, I don't see myself being in ministry. Uh, I want to do something professional. Of course, you know, even when I'm in twelfth grade, I'm teaching in Sunday school. I'll continue teaching in Sunday school. And for one week, every time I prayed, God was, you know, His plan and His purpose. He never changes, right? And uh, he stuck to his and I stuck to mine. And we kind of were uh, juggling between the two. And finally, at the end of it, just to end the discussion or so-called argument with God, I said, OK, God. But it was not an OK in my mind. It was a, I knew I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to go to Bible college. And I completely forgot about it. When I was in 12th grade, I got my uh, marks. And I applied in this college where my sister's studying the best college in Bangor City and she's a topper she's an excellent student so everyone knows her and the first list came second third my, my name was not there anywhere on the list and then she said okay I'll go and speak to the principal because the principal knows her very well she's a very good student he said sorry it's too late and it was too late and my father tried all his influences he couldn't get me and they're all wondering why is it happening in my life and I remember going to the restroom closing the door and crying and said why 
God, why are you doing this to, uh, to me? And then God is saying, remember, you said you'll go to Bible college. And I was way too shocked because I had completely forgotten about it. It was not in my mind. It was not something I, did, I wanted to do. And then I realized that it's no way running away from God's will and plan and purpose. It was going to totally frustrate my life. It's going to, I'm going to be living in frustration uh, and it's not going to help me. So let me just do God's will and plan. And I pursued that and I'm very happy doing that. Okay, so we'll take a break now and, uh, sorry, we'll take a break now and we'll come back after the break, okay? <laughs> 